Shalom to all the viewers out there tuning in. Today we have another imperative message. And if it be the Most High's will, he may open up your eyes, ears, and your spirit that you may receive the information that's getting ready to be brought forth. What inf the information that's getting ready to be brought forth is something that 99% of the Christian pastors did not want you to ever find out. All the top echelon in the Christian organization never wanted you to get hold of this information regarding tithes. They never wanted you to, uh, to, um, to, to get a hold of this information and they're preying off your ignorance. The tithing deception and what the Christian church deems as tithes is the biggest fraudulent activity that's being committed right now. It's a, the Christian church has turned into a multi-billion dollar industry off of the ignorance of the masses. That's, what they, that's, that's, that's essentially what has happened through the tithing lie. So what you're gonna find out in this video is one, tith what tithing actually is according to the Bible and it's gonna find out it has nothing to do with money. Two, you're gonna find out who the tithe was actually for, not the Christian uh, pastor. And you're gonna find out what the tithe was for. And it's not for setting up European white supremacy uh, Christian organizations in people of color's uh, neighborhood. Yeah, I said it, let me say it again. It's not for setting up more Christian organizations pushing a white supremacy doctrine on people of color. Teaching them about a white God and a white Jesus and white angels and everyone in the whole entire Bible is white because that's essentially what the Christian doctrine subliminally does. Yes, they do on all the movies. It has nothing to do with being racism that's, or being racist, that's just what it is. So I'm gonna point it out, that's just what it is. This ain't the Christian church. I'm, I'm not bound by trying to uh, um, caress anyone's feelings. I'm gonna say it how it is. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, racism at all. So that's what you're gonna find out in, uh, in this message. I'm Brother Yerashua. This is the Bible Unlocked, The Tithing Deception. Revelation 12 verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. You're gonna find out that Satan is at it again. Yes, Satan has his hand in the cookie jar. Satan is responsible for deceiving the entire world via the, uh, the Christian church. That's the primary channel that he's using to deceive the whole world. And guess what? You that's funding and tithing to the uh, Christian church, you're the one responsible for funding this prophecy to come to pass via your tithing money, so-called tithing money, because tithing in the Bible is not money. It's nothing monetary. You're the one responsible for doing this. So you can give yourself a round of applause, those good old Christians out there that have funded Satan's agenda. And it says Satan deceived the entire world. The Christian church, I say this every single deception video, the Christian church is still looking for this guy to come. You're still looking for these, this, this major deception to come when it's talking about you. Starting with the Roman Catholic Church in the third century all the way to today. All the way to today. That's the deception that it's talking about. So you're gonna be looking a long time for some other deception to come. When the deception is already here, it's look, you go, go to church on Sunday and you wanna and see, and see, and you'll see this prophecy right here being fulfilled. Go to, go to your local church on Sunday or get on YouTube and look at any Christian, modern Christian video and that's this prophecy being fulfilled right there. Here's an analogy. It's like someone who, say you have a pair of glasses and you can't find these glasses. You're looking all over the place for these glasses. You're looking all under the couch. You're looking on top of the refrigerator. I mean, you're looking, you're looking at all type of places to, to find out where these glasses are at. You're looking in all the most difficult places to see if you place those glasses there. All of that work you've done just to come into the bathroom and look in the mirror and find out the glasses right on top of your head. It's the same thing with the Christian church. You're looking all over the place for Satan. You're looking in the most difficult places to try to find Satan. When all you need to do is go into the Christian church on your little Sunday that you go worship on 
and you're gonna find Satan right there, staring right at you every Sunday, laughing, giggling, joking all in your face. That's where he's at right there. You don't need to look hard to find Satan. That's, that's what makes him so uh, effective, is that you're looking in all the difficult places and he's standing right next to you, squ squeezed right up next to you, tight with you. He's sleeping in the bed with you. He waking up having breakfast with you. He's having your little Sunday dinner with you. Satan deceived the whole world. Now, let's get into the subject of tithing. Let's find out what tithing is according to the Bible. What biblical tithing is before Satan came via the, uh, the, the Christian church and deceived the entire world. Leviticus 27 verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So, the tithe, according to the Bible, is of the seed of the land and the fruit of the trees. You're going to find out that tithing in the Bible is only food. It's only going to be dealing with foods. The tithe of the seed and the tithe of the fruit. This is the first understanding on what tithing is. There's more. Let's get some more. And if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. So a tenth part of the herd and the flock, this is the meat, the first one that we talked about, the fruits and the seed of the uh, ground, that's dealing with the vegetables. Now, it's the herd and the flock. Now it's dealing with the meat. Tithing is food according to the Bible. All throughout the scriptures, what we're going to find out in this message, that it's going to have nothing to do with money. All of it has to do with food. So now we have the tithe of the, the fruits and vegetables and of the meats now. Now you give a 10% of that. Let's go precept upon precept like the Bible commands us to do, and let's get a more... Um, uh, a well-documented explanation on what tithing is. Deuteronomy 14 verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. This is exactly what we just read. Now in Deuteronomy is giving you another count. All the increase that the field bring forth year by year. This is talking about food, not money. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name. And you're supposed to take that food, you can't do this with money, and eat in the place that the Most High has chosen. Now, now the Christian church, they're slick. They're trying to tell you, well, the, uh, God chose uh, the Christian church right up the street. No, let's find out according to the Bible, what is the place or where is the place that the Most High chose to place his name? Second Chronicles 6 verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. So the Most High chose Jerusalem, which is in the land of Israel, not your local neighborhood Christian church. He chose Jerusalem to place his name there. So what your the instructions thus far and this first set of tithing is to take the increase of the um, land, and it's referring to the flocks as well, and you're supposed to take it to where the, the place where the Most High has chose the place's name. So you take those tithes, 10% of your increase, and you bring it to Jerusalem. This is tithing according to the Bible. Then you take it and bring it to Jerusalem. The tithe of corn, of the wine, and of thine oil, and of the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. This didn't have anything to do with Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, or anything, anybody else, or any other monetary system. You take the wine, the corn, the herd, you all, you bring all that to Jerusalem, and that's where you're supposed to eat and enjoy the tithe. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. So there's a dilemma. So if there's a dilemma that arises and you have too much of the tithe, 
say you have like a thousand, your 10% for the year was like a thousand sheep, thousand oxen. You just got too much. You got a hundred pounds of tomatoes. You got too much increase to bring to the place where the Most High chose Jerusalem. Or if it's too far, say you're somewhere else on a long journey and it's just too far for you to bring all this food to Jerusalem. That's what this is going into. Here's the instructions that you're supposed to do. When the Lord thy God have blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money. Then you take all the uh, increase of the flocks, of the, um, the, the fruit and of the vegetables. You take all the increase because it was too much for you to bring up there. Maybe you didn't have enough camels to support the trip. It's too much of it. So now you take it and put it in and turn it into money. This is the only time you're gonna hear about money and tithing together in the same a um, uh, 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 subject. This is it. You're gonna take the, take the um, increase, you're gonna bind it and turn it into money, but you're gonna sell all your stuff and you're gonna exchange it for money. Now watch this. And bind up the money in thine hand and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Then you take that money that you just uh, uh, exchanged for your goods, you take it and then you make the trip to Jerusalem. Let's find out for what. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Then you're supposed to bestow that money, meaning you're gonna exchange it again for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. And the whatsoever, is, it's about to explain what that's talking about. The whatsoever is about to explain it right now. For oxen, for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desire. The, the whatsoever thy soul lusted after was referring to the tithe. The food, the herbs, the vegetables, the fruits. That's what it was referring to. It ain't talking about what, anything you wanna buy. It ain't telling you to go out and whatsoever, oh, I wanna go out and buy a prostitute or weed and crack. It ain't talking about that. It's talking about whatsoever of the tithe, the oxen, the, um, the, the fruits, the vegetables, the oil, the corn, and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And you're supposed to get that food that you have just purchased, purchased with your money, and you're supposed to eat that tithe with you and your household. Letting you know that one of the tithes is for you. That's what one of the tithes is for. One of the tithes of the increase of your land you're supposed to enjoy. You and your family is supposed to get together at Jerusalem and enjoy this tithe. Now, we can't get together with, in Jerusalem now. We, no, one, no one can do that now and enjoy the tithe. You can't, you can't keep the tithe according to the Bible. But this is how it was done in the biblical times. Let's get some more. And the Levites that is within thy gates Thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part, no inheritance with thee. The tithe also was for the Levites, who come from the seed of Levi, of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Levite didn't have any inheritance in the land. So the Levites were dispersed throughout all the, um, the rest of the 11 tribes. And they lived within the gates of each tribe. So you had to take care of the Levite. The Levite was one of the ones who got his portion with the tithe. You couldn't forsake the Levite. That's who the tithe was for as well. Yourself and the Levite, not the Christian pastor. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of the increase the same year. Now we're going into a different type of tithe. At the end of the third year, which is the year of tithing, you bring forth all the increase of the land. It's the same thing, we're still dealing with food, not money, we're still dealing with food. Food, fruits and vegetables, herbs, spices, oils. You bring forth the 10th part of the increase of the third year, we're in a different set of tithing now, and shall lay it up within thy gates. But the difference between this tithe is you don't go to Jerusalem. You stay within your gates for this tithe. You stay within your gates. This one, you don't have to go to Jerusalem and eat there and, and have a feast there. You stay right at home. 
and the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. And the Levite, once again, he gets his portion because they didn't get any inheritance. The Most High was their inheritance. The Levite, he gets his. And the stranger, and the stranger, the Gentiles that was amongst us, that came with us out of the land of Egypt, had children that were still there. The ones that were poor, they got their portion. They were taken care of. And the fatherless, and the fatherless, the people that didn't have any fathers because the father, like, um, like um, all the way in the days of old, were the breadwinners. They're the ones who brought in the bread and provided for the family. The fatherless, which encompasses 90 or 50% of the Christian church, people that's in there that don't have fathers. The tithe was supposed to go to you. You're part of the ones who received part of this tithe. And the widow, and the widow, the people that don't have, the, the women that don't have a husband to provide for them. The widows, which make up another 50% of the Christian church, old women in there that don't have husbands. The tithe was supposed to go to you if we're doing tithes correctly, according to the Bible. The tithe went to you, not the Christian pastor, which are within thy gates shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. Every one of those that was named comes to eat, eat, and be satisfied, not grab $100 bills, $200 bills, $300 bills, $1,000 bills, not come in and grab money. You don't have your hot, your hand in a pot of gold grabbing money. People just grab all their 10% and putting money in, in a basket for everyone to come stick their hand in and grab. That's not what the tithe is in the Bible. That's not tithing. That's not tithing. So now we have a requirement in order to receive tithes. One, it had to be a, a you had to be a Levite doing the work of the Most High. A, not a spiritual Levite, not a spiritual priest, a Levite from the sons of Levi of the 12 tribes of Israel in order to receive tithes. That's what you had to be from the point of Moses all the way on forward. That's what you had to be. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. And the reason why you're supposed to give the tithe is so the Most High will bless you in all the work of your hand. Meaning, he's gonna increase the flocks, he'll increase the, um, the, the fruits of your land, he'll increase the vegetables, if you're tithing and giving your 10% and providing for those that are needy, he would increase your land. He would increase all the, um, the, the vegetables and the food that you're able to have. That's the blessing he was talking about. Not getting you a bigger home, a boat, a jet, giving you a million dollar paycheck. That's not the blessing he was talking about. The blessing, he would bless you so in, in turn you would be able to help the other ones that were needy around your gates and provide for the other people and take care of the Levites who did the work of the, um, the sanctuary. That's what the tithing was for, to take care of your own people, take care of those that were around you. It wasn't to go out and go buy a new Mercedes Benz, give the pastor 10% so he can go out and buy a multi-million dollar home. That's not what the tithing was for, ladies and gentlemen. That's not tithing according to the Bible. That's fraudulent behavior and fraudulent activity and robbery. That's what that is. Nehemiah 10 verse 36. Also the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks to bring to the house of God unto the priests that minister in the house of God. The tithes of the firstlings or the tithes of the fruit, the vegetables, all those um, foods go to the priests or the Levites. That's who the priests were, the Levites. That's who the tithe went to. And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and of our offerings and of the fruit of all manner of trees of wine and of oil unto the priest to the chambers of the house of our God. It don't sound like money to me. 
It doesn't sound like tithing was money to me. It sounds like a bunch of fruits, vegetables, and meat. Like someone can actually, something that someone can actually use. What good is a dollar bill if you got your stomach growling? You, law, you, you in the middle of nowhere. What good is someone handing you a dollar bill? No, the people need food. That's what they needed. They needed something to, to, to nourish themselves. And the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. And the Levites were taken care of, just like the law says, like we already read. The Levites were taken care of. They didn't have to worry about food. That was taken care of because all of the people that were working that had field and owned um, pastures, they all provided for the Levites and gave them uh, food. They all gave to the fatherless, the widows, uh, and, and, the, um, and the strangers. All the poor of the land had food. You were supposed to take care of them. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. When the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithe unto the house of our God. And the Levites, when they receive the tithes, the Levites have to take 10% of the tithes that they received, and then they take that 10% and they give it to the sons of Aaron, which are still Levites, but the sons of Aaron held the position of the high priest and did the service of the burnt offerings and, uh, uh, and the sacrifices. It was the sons of Aaron that, that held that role. So the Levites took 10% from the children of Israel, and the Levites, out of that 10%, they took their 10% and gave to the sons of Aaron. Therefore, everyone was taken care of. No one had to worry about food. This is biblical tithing. This is biblical tithing. See, the, no one's doing it that way in the Christian church. They're not taking it. See, I wouldn't even be making this video if the Christian church, even if they did it, took the money and dispersed it evenly amongst the people, I probably wouldn't even make this video, to be honest with you. I probably wouldn't even make this video because it would probably be more harmful than helpful if I showed people what tithing was, even though it still wouldn't be tithing, but it would be actually a good, um, a, a good um, uh, um, activity taking place if they took the tithes of everyone in the church and then they dispersed it amongst all the, 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 the people even, uh, evenly and took care of everyone's needs. But that's not what the church is doing. They're taking your 10% and they're going out and buying jumbo jets, multi-million dollar homes, and they're taking that money and putting new Christian organizations in other people's communities and, lying, and telling them the same lie over and over. That's what they're doing. They're using it for a satanic cause. They're using it for a satanic cause. There's nothing biblical about paying uh, money as for, for, uh, for tithes. That's just not biblical. Malachi 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. This is the main scripture that the Christian pastor, who's more subtile than any beast of the field because he's working with Satan most of the time, this is the main scripture they're going to use to put a guilt trip on you, playing with your mental, uh, uh, your mental and with your emotions, using psychology. They're going to make you believe that you're robbing the Most High God by not giving 10% of your money, which we already read, tithing has nothing to do with money at all. So this is the scripture they're going to use. They're going to say, see, you ain't paying 10%, you're robbing God. As if God, the Most High God, needs your $100 bill or your 10% of your income. Let's find out what this is talking about. As you continue reading in this verse, you're going to find out, we're going to find out if this is talking about robbing God with shekels and gold, or if this is talking about robbing God with actual food, like tithing is in the Bible. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat, no, $100 bills. Meat, no, George Washington. Meat, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Meat in mine house. May be meat 
in my storehouse. Meat, why does it say meat? Because we already read what tithing is. Meats, herbs, vegetables, fruits. It's food, ladies and gentlemen. So when they pull this scripture out to make you feel guilty about not paying 10% of your hard earned income, this scripture is not talking about paying money. Now let's find out in the first chapter how we were robbing the Most High God with tithes and offerings. Food. Let's find out what we were doing. This is why you have to read the Bible for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You can't be trusting in other people to give you the accurate representation because people will easily twist these scriptures to make it feel like you owe them some money. You owe them some money. Let's go to the first chapter and find out how we were robbing the Most High with tithes and offerings. Malachi 1 verse 12, but ye have profaned it in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof even his meat is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, and ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. This is talking about giving the offerings. It was weariness, meaning it was tiring. We didn't feel like doing it anymore. We didn't feel like doing it anymore. It got old. And ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought up an offering, should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? The Most High says, you are bringing to me animals that were torn, meaning look like they've been fighting. You bringing me oxen and sheep that look like they've been battling with wolves, scars and ripped all up. You bringing this for your offering? You bringing the lame, you bringing the lame animals, meaning sheep that got uh, missing a leg or they broken arms. You bringing me all these sick animals, ones that look like they're about to die. They got um, all type of diseases on them. These are the animals you bringing me. That's how we were robbing the Most High because we were bringing him all these despicable animals. The Most High says, it tells you in the law, that the Most High wants the best of the flock. He don't want no one-eyed sheep. He doesn't want a one-eared lamb. He doesn't want a, 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 a goat that's missing the bottom row of teeth. The Most High didn't want that. You don't go and give the Most High the worst of your flock. That's how we were robbing the Most High, giving him all these sick animals and keeping the best ones for ourselves because the best ones maybe we can take, breed them, and make more money off of them. So that, those, um, those good animals were supposed to go to the Most High to feed the people and we were taking them and feeding ourselves. That's how we were robbing the Most High. Not by paying, not by not paying a 10% in gold and in shekels and talents. That's not what it's talking about. But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Cursed be the deceiver that has a male and, and a male meaning a male in good health, and you saying that, oh, I don't have any good, I don't have any good, this is the best I have right here. And you go and bring uh, the priest a lame or a sick animal, but you have all the, you done held or withheld all the good animals to yourself. He says, cursed be the man that does that. You sacrificing these corrupt, lame, and sick animals, and you holding all the good ones for yourself. That's how we rob the most high. That's how we rob the most, that's what it's talking about in Malachi 3 verse 8, about robbing the most high in tithes and offerings. Not giving him the best of the flock and giving him these tore down animals, these animals that look like they've been hit by buses and look like they've been ran over by elephants. That's what it's talking about. You giving the most high that and not the best of the flock. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And the Most High would give blessings out once we gave the tithes correctly. That's when he would give the blessing out, and we're going to find out what the blessing is that he's going to give out. But if we stop 
giving him all this corruptible meats and, uh, and offerings and give him the best of the flock, then he would open up the window of heaven to pour out blessings. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And the blessing is the Most High would rebuke the devourer, the spirit that goes out into the locusts and all the other plants that go out and tear up crops. The Most High would rebuke those, um, the spirit on those, um, those insects so they would leave your crops alone and go tear up somebody else's crops, someone who, else is, not, someone who, who is not paying tithes. You know, if you know farmers, there's the, uh, the pest and all that, that's a major problem when it comes to crops. The pest and the locusts will tear up your entire crop and have you, uh, 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 have you having seasons without any increase. The Most High would rebuke those and you would be able to, um, you would be able to enjoy the entire um, increase of the field without worrying about the devourer coming and tearing up your crops. That's the blessing it's talking about. It's not talking about sowing a seed, like the, this is the Christian church, they always wanna make you believe, that it's talking about sowing a seed, a hundred dollar seed, and then bam, next thing you know, a year later, you in a million dollar mansion. That's not what the tithe is talking about. That's not what the blessing is talking about. And, and, and sowing a seed in the Bible has nothing to do with giving money. That's another deception. Sowing seed in the Bible is talking about sowing the word into someone's spirit. The seed represents the word, not a hundred dollar Benjamin, a uh, hundred dollar bill or a Benjamin Franklin or George Washington. That's not what it's talking about. I'm telling you, Satan is this, is, is, is he's got, he didn't got his hand all in the Christian doctrine. And your responsibility is to learn for yourself and come out of the Christian doctrine or else you will die in the Christian doctrine. Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Now we're in the New Testament and it still hasn't changed. Tithing is still food. These are all herbs right now that Christ is naming. He's getting on the scribes and Pharisees because they were paying tithes, but it's something that they weren't doing and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So they were doing the tithing, but they were omitting the weightier matters of the law. Letting you know that Christ was not preaching against the law. Mercy, grace, faith, all that is part of the law for the Christian church out there. And Christ was not teaching against the law. He says, these ought ye to have done, meaning, yeah, you were supposed to pay your tithes, which is food, but you were also, also supposed to do the mercy and the grace as well, and faith as well. You were also supposed to do those things as well. So even in the New Testament, tithing is still food. It didn't change. And now that the tithing doctrine is backed into a corner, well, if you're breaking down all the scriptures to your pastor or something, and you got him in a corner, he gonna try to come out and tell you, well, that was back then, you know, nowadays, since we don't have any farms and we don't have any vegetables, now we gotta give money. You say, nah, -uh. the Bible says, this is what the Most High said, Deuteronomy 12, verse 32, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shall not add thereto, nor diminish from it. He says not to add or to take away from the commandments. So if the, the scriptures say that tithing is food, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Tithing is food. You can't add and put your own spin and twist and jump and flips on it. You can't do that. That's why the law is here to protect you. That's why you must read and understand the law because you can't add or take away from it. That's for your own protection so people didn't come later on and start adding their own twist to it and saying, well, this is how, this is what God really meant or this is what God really meant to say. No, the Most High said what he wanted to say. If he said, if he wanted it to be money, 
it would have been money because guess what? We had money back then. We had shekels and talents. There was a monetary system set up. So if he wanted the tithe to be money, guess what? He would have said money. But that wasn't the purpose of the tithe. The purpose of the tithe was to feed the people that was less fortunate. He wanted it to be in food increments. Food is what it was supposed to be. Food, 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 not money. So that's one thing that you need to understand. Don't let somebody come and give their own philosophy because that's one thing people in the Christian church are notorious for doing, and that is philosophy and psychology. Notorious for doing it. They'll find any way to make you believe that tithing somehow done flipped and inverted its way into money. Nuh-uh. The Most High has a scripture for that right here. Don't add or take away from what he said. Everybody will be all right if they just stuck to that. Letting you know also that the Christian church ain't following one thing that the Most High said. They done got rid of all his commandments and they done took in their own commandments. And another thing on top of that, when, which Satan deceived the entire world. How is it that you go to church every Sunday, which you're supposed to be going on the Sabbath day, Satan is in control of that as well, Every Sunday you go to church and they teaching you the law is done away with. We under Christ. They were nailed to the cross. We under grace. Every law is done away with, but somehow this law of tithing done wiggled its way into the, um, the modern day Christian doctrine. Isn't that just amazing? Isn't that just, that, that's just mind boggling. How is every other law done away with besides the law that they can take and twist and earn some income. Letting you know that the Christian church is full of deception. That right there is a red flag. Every other law is done away with, but they can't explain how the, the tithe done wiggled its way into modern day um, Christianity. None of the laws were done away with. They try to say, well, we see tithing done in the New Testament. You also see the Sabbath date done in the New Testament keeping the commandments in the New Testament, but they just say, no, we're gonna skip those. We're not gonna listen to those. We're gonna focus right here on this tithe and we're not gonna do it how the Bible says because we're not under the Bible anyway. We're really under Satan, under the Roman Catholic Church. We're gonna change it into money. That's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna have all these people funding their own stupidity. That's what going to the Christian church does, ladies and gentlemen. First Timothy six, verse three. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. What is that telling you about the Christian church? A bunch of proud people that don't know anything. The majority of them, not all of them, there's sincere Christians out there, but the majority of them, a bunch of proud people that don't know anything about the scriptures. They're not conforming and consenting to the doctrine of Christ. They made up their own doctrine and they're teaching people their own version. They might as well have their own Bible and everything because nothing that they're preaching is coming from the scriptures at all, especially not tithing. If Paul was here right now, he would be telling you, you know nothing because you're not sticking to the doctrine of Christ, which told us to keep the commandments as it is written as it is written, not go off and follow a Christian God, some Christian made up God, which is what modern Christianity is. It's not the God of the Bible for sure, because the God of the Bible told you that tithing was food. The God of Christianity told you that tithing was money. I'm sticking with the most high of the Bible. Other people can go with the God of Christianity. That's not what I'm teaching here. I'm teaching the most high out of the Bible but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, supposing that paying tithes and money is what? Godliness, that's what the, this is, the, like I say, every time I read the Bible, it's condemning Christianity every single time. Don't they have now the prosperity doctrine? 
the prosperity gospel where you sow a seed and bow, you end up with a vineyard? Ain't that what they uh, teach now? It says, supposing that gain is godliness like the Christian church does, saying that if you sow a seed, then you get all the blessings in the world. Yes, that's what the Christian church teaches. Well, guess what? Paul has instructions for you people in the Christian church that go to churches like this. Here's the instruction. From such, withdraw thyself. No, keep going to church on Sunday. Withdraw thyself. Keep paying tithes and money. Withdraw thyself. From such, withdraw thyself. That's what Paul, through the Spirit of the Most High, is letting all the people know. If Paul were here today on the earth, he would be telling people to get out of the Christian church, teaching you that gain is godliness. When godliness in the Bible is keeping the commandments and doing what God says. That's what godliness is. Not going off and making up your own uh, 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 gospel, going off and doing your own thing. It's sticking to the guidelines that the Most High set in place. Like one of them, tithing is food. That's one of them. That's one of the guidelines the Most High set in place. Paul saying, get away from these people. That's the, the, the decree that's being put forth. Leave the Christian church. Because not you're going to die in the Christian church. I'm going to be straight honest with you. You're going to die in the Christian church. When judgment comes forth, you're going to die in the Christian church because that Christian church has nothing to do with the Most High God at all. Nothing to do with them. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. Because gain in monetary, in the monetary aspect, is not going to benefit you when you bite the dust. You didn't come into the world with 50 and $100 bills strapped to you. And you're definitely not leaving with money strapped to you as well. You're going to have to meet the most high in judgment. That's what you're going to have to do. Meet the most high in judgment. And I know a lot of you out there are paying tithes because you trying to have some type of work on your stamped on your name for when you have to meet the most high. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the main reason the people out there are paying tithes in the Christian church, trying to buy their way into the kingdom of heaven. Because you know in your spirit that you have to do some type of work to get into the most high, to get into heaven. And you know you can't stand in front of the most high on judgment day and he asks you, well, what'd you do? And you sit there and says, well, all I did was believe. You know you're going to the lake of fire. You know it already. Whether you want to admit it or not, you know you're going to the lake of fire. So people try to use tithing as a way to have some type of accomplishment stamped to their name. When this tithing that you're doing is not earning you any points towards the kingdom of heaven at all. Nothing, because gain is not godliness. Paying someone money, that's not godliness at all. You can't pay your way into the kingdom of heaven. You just can't do it. You got to keep the commandments to get into the kingdom of heaven. That's what you have to do. I mean, people will do anything possible to get out of keeping the commandments of the Most High. Anything possible, including paying all your money to the church because you think that's the good deed that the Most High is looking for when the Most High can care less about any of your uh, profits and your earnings. He can care less about that. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. The people that's trying to get rich like that's the objective of 99% of the Christian pastors to get a large congregation, have you pay them 10% of your tithes, and now they own jumbo jets flying across the, the, the country. That's the objective, to get rich, because money is the objective in the Christian community. That's the reason behind the prosperity doctrine, just in case you didn't get the memo, is to get rich. You're going to fall into many lusts. This is the Christian pastor. He's going to fall into many lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. And all the people that's following those doctrines about getting rich, paying tithes, and sowing seeds, 
you're all gonna get drowned right in the flood of destruction. It's gonna, the hammer is gonna be banged on you so hard in judgment day. You're not gonna know what hit you because you were supposing that gain was godliness when keeping the commandments is what's godliness, what godliness is. Not getting money, that don't, getting money doesn't show someone how blessed you are. You're gonna get drowned right with everyone else that's going along with that doctrine. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's why the Christian church does not believe in the Bible. That's why you've turned tithing from food into money. Because the, mon the love of money is the root of all evil, which is what the Christian church is founded on. Evil, the love of money turning, and you've erred from the faith, from the, 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 the pre-Constantine Christians during the time of Christ up to about the third century AD, all the way from now, all the way into modern Christianity. All those people have erred from the faith. The ones after Constantine, all the way up till now, have erred from the faith and not even teaching nothing biblical. From your Sunday worship, to your paying tithes as money, to your, we don't have to keep the commandments anymore, to keeping Christmas, to keeping Easter, none of that is with the faith. And that's what Paul's letting you know. Once you start dabbling into making riches your primary objective. That's what Paul is talking about. That's why you have the outcome of Christianity as it is, in, as it is today. It's turned into a multi-billion dollar corporation where people are making a living and it's turned into a business. People are making a living off of your ignorance because there's no way you should have people that's been in the Christian church for 20 plus years and 30 years and don't know what tithing is. How do you not know what tithing is and that tithing is not money? How do you not read these scriptures and say, well, hold on. The tithe of the seed of thy land, the tithe of the fruit, the tithe of the herd. Hold on, pastor. Can you show me where tithing says money? I'm supposed to tithe 10% of the money. And can you show me where it says the 10th part goes to you? Because I'm reading right here, it says to the widows, the fatherless, the strangers, and to myself that I may enjoy the tenth part of my increase. Can you show me that? They're praying off of your ignorance. I mean, most people are gonna go right along like sheep led to the slaughter because everybody else is doing it. We, I'm just gonna go with the flow. I'm just, I guess everybody else is doing it, so it must be correct. Just like sheep led to the slaughter. The sheep, when it's time to slaughter sheep, the sheep ain't doing nothing but following the next sheep right, right in front of it. He don't know what's going on. He's just looking around, man, just making noise. He don't know what's going on. He don't know he's about to get his neck chopped off. And he's about to get skinned and put on someone's dinner plate. He don't know that. That's exactly what the Christian church is molding people to do. Just go and follow along with everyone else. Don't ask questions. That's why after the end of your little uh, sermon in your Sunday church, the pastor don't have no Q&A. He just get up and roll out. You take what he got and he's gone. There's no hard Q&A where, you, where, you, where you're making him dig into the Bible and say, well, show me this in the scriptures. Show me where that's at in the scriptures. Show me this Sunday worship in the scriptures. Show me this tithing as, as money in the scriptures. It's a shame people have been in the church 20, 30 years and don't know what tithing is. Tithing is a fundamental, basic principle of the Bible. It's the fundamental basics. And all the lessons that have been brought out, all of them have been elementary basic lessons. This is milk that we're dealing with. I haven't even, we haven't even graduated elementary school yet in the, in the knowledge that I've been bringing out in, these, in all these lessons thus far. It's a shame that people can go to the Christian church that long and have no clue that tithing is food for people that are less fortunate and for the Levites because the pastor is not a Levite, so he cannot collect tithes. There's no spiritual Levite or any of that. 
There's no spiritual priest. The Levites are the priest. From the seed of Levi, from the 12 tribes of Israel, the people of color, not the people over there in the land of Israel. It's a shame that people do that, man. It's like, going, it's like anybody wasting their time going to any type of school and not learning nothing. If you go to an elect, electrical school to be an electrician and you've been there 20 years and you still don't know what amperage is and watts and voltage and you don't know how to connect circuit breakers and you've been there 20 years, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you done been to a, um, a, a, a plumbing school and you still don't know how to connect pipes together, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you done been in school from kindergarten all the way to the 12th grade and you graduate from the 12th grade and you still don't know how to do basic timetables, what are you doing? 12 years you wasted your time. People have been in the Christian church for 20, 30 years and have no clue what tithing is. They don't know what, they don't have a clue what day they're supposed to worship the most high on. They think they're supposed to be going to church on Sunday. They think they don't have to keep no commandments. Don't even know how to get to the kingdom of heaven. Don't know what, don't know what salvation is according to the Bible. And, sh and, and ask them, if you ask yourself any of these questions, do you know what this is? What scripture can you go to to, sh to prove what it is? People don't have any clue. They're just sitting up there. What are you learning in the Christian church to have someone, to have yourself pay 10% of your hard earned income in the Christian church. You ever ask yourself that? Come from a Christian ceremony, a, a church sermon and get out of there and say, hold on, let me find out. Well, what did I absolutely learn today? I know it felt good, it hit my emotions, but what did I learn today to give this man or woman 10% of everything that I earn? That's the question. What is going on in the Christian church to make you feel that you need to pay 10% of your hard-earned income? Because the income, that the 10% that you're given is not being taken and given to the rest of the dispersed among people that need it. That's not what's happening. They're taking the, they're your 10% and along with everyone else's 10%, they're taking a small chunk of that and front and, and going out and feeding the homeless one time a month. When that, ain't, when that ain't breaking a sweat in all the money that they got from all your ties. The rest of the money they're taking and sticking it right in the pocket so their pocket is on Vin Diesel and pockets are on Hulk Hogan and on Arnold Schwarzenegger, fat, wallets are fat. Going out buying private jets, multi-million dollar mansions while you barely at home can afford your light bill. You barely at home can afford your light bill, your rent, can't afford to put your kids in college. Listen, you pay 10% to the Christian church over 30 years, you've already funded one of your kids to go to college. Over 30 years, do the calculations. Over 30 years, if you only make something like $10 an hour, over 30 years of paying your 10% tithes, you have already funded one of your kids to go to college. And you paying 10% to someone that you don't even know why you're doing it. You don't have any biblical proof on, why, proof on why you're doing it, and you ain't learning nothing out of it. You're funding your own stupidity because you're just going to sit there, look around at church, clap, sing, coon, kumbaya, hold hands, and not learn anything about the Bible. That's what's going on in the Christian church. You're not going to learn anything about the Bible. It's a shame that I have to do a lesson about tithing for people that have been in the, in the church for 20 years. 10 plus years, 20 plus years, and you don't know what it is. Of course, you're, it's not, you know, it, it's always good to, to start learning, and I'm not blaming anyone for doing that, but I'm, I'm attacking the system on how it's set up to keep you dumb, to keep you saying all you need to do is believe and I don't have to verify anything. That's plain foolishness. You're funding your own ticket to the lake of fire, and you're paying for everyone else who's gonna follow that madness to go to the lake of fire right along with you. Because gain is not godliness in the scriptures. That's what's going on. So now that you know what tithing is according to the Bible, you'd be a fool to go out and pay 10% of your hard earned money because tithing is not money in the Bible. You're not getting any extra points 
by turning it from food to money because the most high don't care about you giving your money. He says, do it one way. He don't want you saying, well, my way I think is better. There's many instances in the Bible where people did something where they thought was good and the most high punished them for doing that. He said, I didn't tell you to do it that way. I didn't tell you to do it that way. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So this is the conclusion of the entire lesson, is to fear the Most High and keep his commandments. And now we know that one of God's commandments is that tithing is food. Tithing is food. And it's to be given to the Levites, which are, uh, which are the priests, the fatherless, the strangers that was amongst us, and the widows. That's who it was for, not the Christian pastor or the Christian organization or to give, to set up more Christian deception um, organizations in other people's communities. That's not what it was for. So now we understand that. Hopefully you've got a better understanding and you now understand what tithing is according to the scriptures. Now, this is not to say that you can't give any money because there is a place and a room to give money. It's called alms in the Bible. That's what you read in the New Testament. People, that's what people were using to fund Paul, and that's what they were given amongst uh, the disciples were selling their, um, their material and spreading amongst all the people that had need. That's what they were dealing with, alms, which is more of a free will uh, offering. You give what you can give. So if you only have uh, $10 for the month to give or $5 for the month to give, then that's what you give if you're able to give it, because alms is required in the Bible. You are to give something to help toward um, pushing truth out. But it ain't talking about giving it to the lying Christian church that's just going to push more deception on people. It's talking about giving it to someone who's actually putting in diligent work and teaching you something. It's actually talking about giving it to someone for a better cause, who's going to better the cause of the people. Not keep people dumbfounded and not learning anything and keeping people's minds oppressed. That's not what it's talking about. So you are to give uh, alms to, the, um, to, uh, to those that are doing the work. You are, to, you are to do that. And there's plenty of brothers out there that spend their life um, putting work in for this truth. There's plenty of brothers out there that do that. Those are the ones you need to be given alms to, to support them um, out there on, on their research because it takes money to get materials and to get the books to bring out the information. And it takes time and diligent study in order to bring out information on, you know, on, a, on, a, on a such, a, a such a level. But as far as giving out money and saying you need to give 10% of your hard earned income, that's not biblical. That's not biblical, that's blasphemy, that's what that is. That's an absolute lie. That's not a requirement in the Bible. So hopefully you've been edified and if your eyes been open, you'll come out of that deception with the, uh, the, um, the hope and the um, spirit through the spirit of the Most High. And with that, I'm Brother Yerushalam, and I say, until next time, Shalom.